Hey, welcome back, Business 163, Personal Finance. And we're still in module number five. We're now in video number three. We're gonna be looking at our very first budgeting method that you can consider using. This is a very, very popular method. It's been around for a little while. And as you can see from the title slide, we are looking at the method called the 50-30-20 budget. 50-30-20. And as you might guess, Look at that, 50 plus 30 plus 20, well, that adds up to 100. That's right, 100%. It's a way to divide up your income into separate categories. And so, as we get started here, the 50-30-20 budget divides your after-tax monthly income into three categories, essential needs, wants, financial goals, and it separates it by that ratio, 50% need, 30% wants, 20% savings or financial goals. All right. So you can take a look at this image we've got here that we borrowed from the fine folks at The Balance. You see there, 30% goes to wants, shopping, dining out, hobbies. 50% goes to your needs, things like groceries, housing, utilities your health insurance payment, the portion you've got to pay after tax, your car payment, those kinds of things, right? And 20% goes into the piggy bank, however you define that piggy bank, more on that in a little bit, but 20% uh, goes to savings. And so the whole idea here, right, is to make sure that the stuff you spend money on, that you're able to sit down and divide them up into these three big, broad categories. Uh, essentials, wants, and we, we sometimes call savings or financial goals, right? And so you can see here in essentials, things like groceries, rent, utilities, your recurring bills. Everyone's life's a little different, but some of those big categories will occur for all of us, right? And then in that smaller category, wants, the things that sometimes we, well, maybe perhaps emotionally miscategorize as needs, right? They're not necessarily, we don't need them, but we sure want them, right? Hobbies, vacations, dining out, streaming, service, subscriptions. There's no end to specific items that, if we're honest with ourselves, we really should categorize as wants. And then finally, when we say financial goals, notice we're not just talking about savings, things like saving for retirement or an emergency fund or a rainy day fund, but also debt repayment for those of us perhaps who have a little too much debt, as we uh, realized in the last module when we measured our financial health, this is where all that financial stuff, meeting our financial goals, goes to in that 20% bucket in the pie, all financial goals. For many of us, it's savings, and for some of us, it's more than savings, right? So, about 50, 30, 20, about this method, most people uh, spend too little and unknowingly, uh, I'm sorry, we save too little and we unknowingly spend too much on non-essentials. This is um, typical for many of us. And so this plan was designed originally for working class families to plan their spending, to limit their overspending and to increase savings. That was the main rule, This the, the main reason this method was originally created. So you need to keep that in mind, right? If you are the type of family or household whom uh, really kind of fits this bill, right? We unwittingly spend a little too much, we don't save enough, uh, and we'd like to reverse that. This might be the kind of method that works for you. Now, the wonderful thing about 50, 30, 20, one of the good things is that the 50, 30, 20 categories are just guidelines. They're not granular rules that um, we should try really hard to apply to every single penny that gets spent. It's more intended to provide great big categories for us um, to really sort of establish who we want to be in our financial future life and then create a, a set of guidelines to get us there, right? So recognize, first of all, it is a set of guidelines, not meticulous, detailed rules. And also notice that 50, 30, 20, just setting these categories and categorizing things that doesn't track your budget from week to week and from month to month. So you see the last bullet point, you're still going to need some other tool to track your budget from month to month, whether that's an online system, an app like Mint, or uh, an application like Quicken, 
or a spreadsheet or a piece of paper in a ledger with a pencil and an eraser. Whatever it is, you'll need another tool to track your monthly and weekly spending. Uh, that's not really what 503020 does. All right. Now, how do you get started with 503020? First of all, calculate your monthly income, your income after taxes, what you're actually bringing home. And then second, you calculate a spending threshold for each category, right? If you know your monthly income, then you can figure out what 50% of it is. Well, that's what goes to essentials. What 30% of it is, that's what's available for your wants. And what 20% is, and that's the money that you should be saving or spending on meeting your financial goals, like paying back debt, all right? And then you plan your budget around these numbers, and then you will need some sort of tool to track monitor and follow how well you're doing adhering to the guidelines you set for yourself in creating the 50-30-20 budget, right? What are some advantages of 50-30-20? Well, here's a, it's a very clear advantage. It's simple and clear. It's easy to understand. All you can spend is your after-tax income. So let's divvy it up in a way that generally makes sense, all right? Uh, it is flexible. It provides only a set of guidelines, right? Not a detailed dollar by dollar rule for how to spend money. And quite frankly, it's not nearly as restrictive as some of the other methods that we're going to present to you to consider. So 503020 seems to have a lot going on, a lot going for it, right? Here are some disadvantages of 503020 that you need to be aware of. When you create these three broad categories of essentials, wants, and financial goals, there's a lot of gray area. It's not always easy to neatly divide your spending into these three categories. It's easy to blur the lines there, right? And so, um, you know, sometimes uh, it can be, uh, for some folks, a little frustrating uh, to say, well, I think I should put it in this bin, but then I'm not really sure, right? Okay, now here's another uh, disadvantage potentially 503020. Remember, 503020 was set up for working class households with pretty much a regular source of monthly income. And applying 503020 for certain uh, lower income households can be really hard, right? It can be difficult because saying that, okay, we're in, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're, we have some, some difficulties, some challenges just simply because of, of uh, low income. It's hard to just use these 50, 30, 20 uh, percentages. You may have to modify those to really make life work because, quite frankly, uh, for lower income households, many times the amount of money spent towards housing is substantially more percentage wise than it is percentage wise for higher income households, right? Just some of the basic math that's involved there. Also, savings might not be enough depending on your goals, your income, etc. right? 20%, that may not be enough depending on what you want to do when how you want to plan for the rest of your future life, right? Um, another disadvantage you've already noted of 50, 30, 20, you're still going to need another kind of a method or system to track and monitor your spending, right? To make sure you're staying uh, within the boundaries of 50, 30, 20. So uh, this in and of itself doesn't give it to you, right? And therefore... There are other versions of 50-30-20 that have been advocated and suggested by, um, by financial gurus out there. You can see them there. There's the 80-20, which basically says, okay, 20% is going to savings, and then the other 80%, okay, you're going to figure out how you're going to divvy that up, right? Or the 70-20-10, right, uh, which you can see there how that divides up. If you have a lot of debt, maybe 20% of your income goes to debt payments, 10% to savings, and then 70% goes to this great big category called living, which, um, of course, you know, encompasses both the essentials and wants categories from the original 50-30-20 method. All right, so that's a lot to digest. I have also given you, for this method, as well as most of the other methods, an additional resource page. Uh, that page will consider will uh, uh, serve you up a short video uh, on the 50, 30, 20 method, as well as a couple of really good articles that I want you to take a look at to help really provide some more detail and flesh out the mechanics of 50, 30, 20. This is a great method. I hope that you find this useful for your consideration. 
um, more on, on actually preparing your budget once you make a choice uh, and those kinds of things uh, as we keep going in this module. But this is then the 50-30-20 budgeting method. Some additional methods coming in the next couple of videos. We'll see you in the next lecture.